Imagine traveling back in time 225 million years ago. Our ancient Earth would be hardly recognizable. Mount Everest is just a molehill. And where the Hawaiian Islands normally are, instead is a vast stretch of ocean. Even our familiar continents have been crammed together into one giant supercontinent called Pangaea. Fast forward to today, and you'll realize that Earth's incredible diversity of landscapes didn't just happen overnight. Instead, our planet has been gradually shaped and reshaped over millions of years. Scientists long suspected that the Earth's crust was moving, but they didn't know how or why until a fascinating theory revolutionized the study of our planet. Take a look at the outer surface of our planet. It may look like one solid shell. But according to the theory of plate tectonics, this outer layer, called the lithosphere, is actually broken up into massive, rigid slabs called tectonic plates that fit together like puzzle pieces, floating on a thick, molten layer of the mantle called the asthenosphere. The plates slide around like slow-motion bumper cars, traveling up to six inches a year. Right now, Earth's crust is divided into seven large plates and dozens of smaller ones. The boundaries between these plates are dynamic and violent places that make and break Earth's crust. The relative movement of the plates creates three types of boundaries. A divergent boundary occurs when two plates move away from each other. On land, you can easily see this. Diverging plates create huge troughs, like the Great Rift Valley in Africa. If the spreading here continues, the Indian Ocean will eventually flood the rift, converting the entire eastern Horn of Africa into a massive island. Transform boundaries are where two plates grind past each other in opposite directions. The most famous example is the San Andreas Fault, where portions of Southern California, including Los Angeles, are sliding roughly two inches closer to Northern California each year. A convergent boundary, on the other hand, is where two plates collide. The impact often weakens and crumples the crust upward into jagged mountain ranges. 50 million years ago, the Indian plate smashed into the Eurasian plate, giving rise to the Himalayas, the world's highest mountain range. Even today, the slow motion pileup continues, causing the Himalayas to grow nearly a half an inch every year. In other areas, one convergent boundary plate is forced beneath another, creating a dangerous subduction zone. The immense pressure and melting crust produce some of the most powerful volcanic eruptions on our planet. Pent-up tension between converging plates can also give way suddenly, producing violent earthquakes and triggering catastrophic tsunamis. A 2011 convergent boundary quake off the coast of Japan generated a tsunami that killed nearly 16,000 people and caused an estimated $300 billion in damage. In the early 1900s, German geophysicist Alfred Wegener noticed that the east coast of South America fit like a puzzle piece into the west coast of Africa. Wegener argued that the continents were once fused together into a single supercontinent and have since drifted apart. But he couldn't prove how it happened and guessed, incorrectly, that it was the centrifugal force from the spinning Earth. 
Then, in the late 1960s, researchers surveying the ocean floor made a surprising discovery. As rising magma cools along mid-ocean ridges, iron-rich crystals in the new rock align with Earth's north-south polarity, just like the needle in a compass. Every 100,000 years or so, Earth's polarity reverses, and the switch is permanently recorded in the seafloor. But the researchers discovered that the striped pattern of normal and reversed polarity was identical on both sides of ocean ridges. That meant that new seafloor was forming at the center of the ridge and then moving apart. This process, now known as seafloor spreading, provided the first hard evidence that Earth's tectonic plates were moving. And unlike Wegener, scientists today have much more plausible ideas about how it happens. One popular idea is that intense heat deep in the Earth's core causes molten rock in the mantle to become less dense and rise. As it nears the surface, it cools and becomes denser, causing it to sink back down. This circular pattern of movement is called a convection cell. At divergent ridges, these cells slowly push the plates apart as magma seeps in to fill the gap. As the magma cools, it hardens into new ocean crust, pushing the older crust out of the way. Colder and thicker than the mantle below. Here, a subduction zone forms as the old crust is forced deep into the earth and returned to the mantle. The result is a global system of conveyor belts that create, destroy, and recycle Earth's crust keeping the volume and diameter of the planet constant. Inch by inch, millennia after millennia, the imperceptible movements of tectonic plates across our planet have built the world as we know it. And that is truly ground, that is truly groundbreaking. <laughs>